what is happening guys so i stumbled upon this as well while i was looking some Elden ring stuff up why are people so mad about Elden ring dlc now i've been hearing a lot of people are mad because it's extremely hard and all this crap i think people thought they were gonna just burn through the game being level 99 on everything or maxing out on everything but i wanted to jump on in and check this out but before that um i don't actually even think it's that hard honestly it's challenging yeah some of the basic uh enemies will do a lot of damage to you but you just got to know how to play i mean i think people were jumping in and going right to the bosses that's my guess the impeller is really hard that's one of the hardest bosses i faced so far but as far as being unfair i didn't think so i thought it was a lot of fun but you know i feel like gamers just need to complain about something let's see all right what's going on guys i've been playing elden ring dlc for about four days straight now i've reached the final boss and i'm still working on it but what i can confidently say is that this dlc is the best dlc from software has ever created I and agree. it's really not close and considering that pretty much all of from software's past dlcs were 10 out of 10s then yep. you can imagine how i feel about this one so i do have some complaints about it which i'll likely detail in future videos but overall i think it very clearly is a 10 out of 10 for what it tries to be but if you were to go check steam reviews right now that's not the picture you would get and that's because at the moment shadow of the earth tree is currently under fire by a campaign of people trying to review bomb it and you may be wondering well if this dlc is so good and from software at their best why would anybody want to review bomb it well we're gonna read through a lot of these and find out and i can tell you right now it's pretty ridiculous what was it uh so we got now we're on elden ring before that it was dragon's dogma everybody was complaining about uh a rise of ronin uh yeah so it's just what's the next game coming out they'll complain about that next it's just hate 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 i think people just love to hate on anything so as we get into this today, if you're playing through the Elden Ring DLC and are thoroughly enjoying it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm going to have a ton of Elden Ring DLC content over the next few weeks and probably for the next year, if we're being honest. But take a look at this. Popping over to the Elden Ring Steam page, you will see that reviews are mixed, which has that. never happened for a From Software game ever. And if you look at recent reviews, over the past few days there are a flood of negative ones. So let's just go no cherry picking straight down through these negative reviews and find out why they exist. I finished Dark Souls Trilogy and I'm at the final bosses of Elden Ring. The difficulty level in all of them was balanced. I played this DLC just out of curiosity and I've never seen such contrived difficulty in boss battles in my life. It's not just lifeless nerds who played this game, there are also busy casual players like me. I can't spend hours on a fake difficulty boss. Making- Dude, I'm probably more busy than you and I beat the game and I don't obsess about games like that. I would say I'm casual because I don't play the games 24-7. AI read bro. input does not mean a challenge. What are you a scientist? Next time when designing a Give boss. Me a break. Now you're going to notice a common theme between a lot of these reviews, and that is the difficulty. And before we even break this down, I will easily concede that this is a very hard DLC. It's it is probably hard. the it hardest is hard. from software content they've ever but made. Not this unbelievably DLC hard. This is also supposed to be the final cap and pinnacle of Elden Ring content. We all knew it was going to be hard. It was advertised as being hard. So I don't know why we're all surprised here that it is. So I think it would be exceedingly unfair to say that because it's hard, it's bad. The question here is, is it good difficulty or bad difficulty? I say good. Now this negative review gives one specific example of what a bad difficulty boss does. Input reading. Now, we do know for a fact that certain bosses in the base game of Elden Ring did at one point have input reading. The Godskin mm -hmm. duo specifically. If you pressed an input to heal, it would chunk a fireball every time. I feel like that doesn't monster later, hunter also. was removed or at least reduced reduced i can't remember for certain but off the top of my head i can't recall any instances of the dlc bosses input reading in that regard and i know for a fact the final boss does not at least from my own testing and i will agree wholeheartedly that input reading is bad design nobody likes it but we have to ask here is the reviewer just making this up as an excuse for the bosses being hard let's read some others and see if they feel the same it's hard for the sake of being hard is a really good way of describing it there's a I difference so. between hard and bad boss design now this next review at least least give some examples of why that is. Let's I've see. just completed all the main remembrance bosses for Shadow of the Earth Tree without summoning, so now I can give an informed opinion on them. Before I begin, let me just say that the content added aside from the bosses is a great addition to the game. The world is amazing, the music is great, the new weapons and abilities are awesome additions, and so on. The reason I gave the negative review is because the bosses are incredibly poorly executed and are simply a series of cheap tricks being spammed repeatedly that take chunks out of your health. They are not fun to fight whatsoever. I personally 
gain no satisfaction whatsoever from defeating any of them, instead only fleeting relief. These new bosses only serve to highlight the terminal main issue that this game has. The player combat in Elden Ring is not adequate for the enemies you face. It does not offer a compelling, skill-based experience like Sekiro in Bloodborne. You are being frustrated into trying to get damage in after watching the boss do a series of acrobatics for 15 seconds, only to get slammed by a combo extension that is intentionally designed to catch you out when you get sick of waiting around. This is not fun. This is the main point I'm making with this review. It's not that it's too hard for me. The intended way to f Honestly, I felt like Bloodborne had harder bosses than even this DLC and uh, Sekiro. Sekiro has some hard bosses. But um, I think they, they just patched the Divine Dancing Beast line, whatever that thing is called. I think it's actually easier now. Fight these bosses in the game stupid. is not fun. Now, of course, fun is subjective, and I can't really they argue about against Liza the fact P that this person didn't have fun. But what I can argue against is the claim that the player does not have the adequate ability for the bosses at hand. That is just fundamentally untrue. The reason people end up feeling this way is because they don't utilize the tools that the game gives them. Forget how many aspects of combat Elden Ring provides. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about summoning. I myself am a pretty average player, and I managed to beat Same. all except the final so far without summoning what the majority of people forget is that did every both. boss summon has a weakness not. I did this two play dlc throws. shoves crafting down your throat there mm -hmm. are so many cookbooks it wants you to use items every single boss has an elemental weakness so these items are extremely useful for turning the tide of a boss fight does yeah. the boss wear little armor and have lots of skin exposed maybe you should try bleed is the boss made of wood try fire is the boss wearing metal armor and standing in a giant pool of lightning. water try lightning these are things you need to consider. I know yeah. most people want to take the same build into every fight and fight every boss the exact same way. I switch it's up just a lot. not the smart thing to do. No. And I can see how that would get boring. I'm not saying to change your whole build every fight, but think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Here's another very long-winded review Let's see what that I this won't is. read the entirety of, but they do go into detail a little bit about the bosses, saying, I have mixed feelings about the bosses. Normally, all bosses would be balanced somewhat. Sure, some will be stronger than others, but there would be a balance between its attack power health, downtime, and speed. Most of the bosses in this DLC seem to be jacks of all trades. They're tanky, attack really fast, deal a lot of damage, and have minimal downtime. This makes it that the average player is forced to adapt their build. At the end of the game, I finally tapped into multiplayer and realized that almost everyone gave up on rolling to dodge and just use a heavy shield with a needle to poke enemies to death. Even Not the me. final boss becomes a joke with this build. I, now, I didn't actually time. read this review before stating that last point about thinking outside the box, but it kind of proves exactly exactly what I was saying. Think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a fan of cheese builds, but how many people used a great shield in the base game? Very little. You are meant to experiment. I don't understand why you would want to go into the DLC and not try new things. For example, I played the first half of the DLC with Raptor Claws and Blood Flame Blade, and it worked pretty well. But about at the midpoint, I got to a boss I physically couldn't hit because they didn't have enough range. So yep. I went and explored the map and found a great katana that fit with my stats and ended up beating the boss first try with this new weapon yeah guys i switched from uh blasphemous blade i switched to the smith's grip hammer um a great katana the dragon great katana i was switching between everything everything in the game and different playthroughs on my own time as well you got to try different things that's what they put all this stuff in here for but i'm telling you i just think people love now, to complain i have sat there all day memorized every single move the boss exactly has, and attacked only at the even time the boss could reach so. yeah that's a viable option but it would have been really boring instead i got to go experience more content the dlc had to offer and find a new and in my opinion much more fun way to play and my brother who was playing beside me got to the same boss didn't want to change his build but figured out the boss's elemental weakness and employed that making it honestly pretty easy so the point here is you don't have to change your entire build for each fight, you just have to get creative. Stop trying to fit a square into a triangular hole. And even if you are that stubborn, eventually it will break Red Bear through. Now, cool. I totally understand the point if you're mad about the bosses constantly roll catching you. It is no secret, these bosses are designed to punish your pre-existing playstyle. They slightly delay their attacks. They have long combos, and some of them do have very short downtime. That's not necessarily bad design, it's just things you have to adapt Guaranteed to. Get, get and even a if nerf. all you do is roll and R1, every fight 
fight is still possible that way. And again, even if you don't want to learn all the moves, you can go get almost all of the scattered tree fragments as soon as you enter the DLC, Yep. not having to fight any bosses. And if you do do that, it'll make at least the first half of the Remembrance bosses very easy in comparison. But if you go and read through these reviews, one thing you'll notice is a lot of the people complaining that the DLC is too hard didn't care to go looking for these fragments. I mean, you have the official Elden Ring what? website putting out a guide oh to go look for them, God. and they still won't do it. So at that point, what can you do? Those people are beyond help. But here's yeah. the thing. These bosses are supposed to be that hard. They're supposed to be the toughest challenge. Funny enough, guys, like I do that on my channel, too, is like I try to release to show where the fragments were and the ashes were just to help people because I I got the game a little bit early, not crazy early like a lot of big YouTubers, but I struggle, too, until I got the fragments. It definitely helps. I mean, if you want to beat the game without the fragments, by all means, don't complain. It's hard because it got to be some way to nerf all these max out characters that these people coming in with challenges in the entire game. This is the pinnacle of Elden Ring. If the bosses were exactly the same way that the base game bosses are, with People much more downtime, shorter combos, and slower moves, and there was no new leveling system, then there would be no peak. It would just be more bosses on the same level, yep. and the DLC wouldn't feel like the culmination of everything you've learned in Elden Ring so far. The insane feeling difficulty is entirely necessary, and even thinking back, the absolute hardest bosses in From Software games have always been been in the, in the DLCs. DLC. This is nothing new. Especially Menace, Bloodborne. Fume Knight, Orphan of Cause, Orphan. Medir, yep. all DLC bosses, yep. and all some of the most memorable fights in the games. Yep. They are memorable because they are those ultimate challenges. And even when it comes to this DLC, you only have to fight three bosses. The majority of the ones Sorry. I see people complaining about in these reviews are optional, so I don't know what to tell them. I really would like to see more detail and examples provided of how a lot of these bosses have quote unquote bad design, because having fought all the bosses so far, only one of them I think has bad design. And that's just because that? I think there's obvious problems with the hitboxes. But for the sake of spoilers, I'm not going to specify uh, which one. Well, it is a it somewhat later one. But here's the thing okay. too that I think a lot of people don't understand and are running into problems in this DLC. Some of these attacks that the bosses have require a certain directional dodge. You can't just dodge into them and expect to not get hit. You have to dodge in a certain direction. And there mm. have been multiple attacks that do that that I've noticed. For example, the final boss has an attack that can only be dodged when dodging perfectly perpendicular to the attack. Mm -hmm. So if it's coming straight on, you have to dodge at a 90 degree angle left or right. That's not bad design. Guys, sorry to stop here. That was like me with the Impala. I was rolling away from him and he would catch me because he had such a long attack. So I realized you have to run into him and it was onto his left side, I want to say. So he is right on that. It's just that most people won't take the time to learn that yep. and pick up on how it's possible to dodge. With these bosses being the ultimate challenge in the game, they're inevitably going to have to be more complex. Yes, that means harder, but it's not simply just for the sake of being harder. It's necessary. And honestly, the fact that From Software has achieved this difficulty while still making every approach to the boss mostly viable is really impressive because I've seen too many games do hard bosses but only have one way to beat them. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised after they played this DLC and then go back and play the main game again, you're going to notice just how much you improved as a player. And when that realization happens, then you're going to know that it was good design all along. So overall, I don't agree with these bad reviews at Me all. Either. I think we're dealing with some really incredible boss fights here. Now I know when I've died 30 times and I rage and throw my controller and say the bosses are badly designed, that doesn't make it true. And I think that kind of situation is what's going on with a lot of these here. Now aside from whining about the bosses, I did see quite a bit of negative reviews talking about the performance and i do have to give that position i myself had a lot of performance issues in this dlc you could, yeah i Even said that actually frame skips in the boss fights that got me hit by an Especially attack i otherwise would have dodged so that bit is true but definitely not as common as some people are making it out to be it was mainly condensed to the early areas toward the end of the game i didn't have any at all but now you know why some people are so mad about elden ring dlc and let me know down in the comments do you agree with them what are your overall thoughts on the dlc so far and have you beaten it yet? Either way though, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new around here. Again, I will have a ton of Elden Ring DLC content coming out soon, but with all that, I will catch you in the next one. Guys, um, I, my personal opinion, I love the DLC. It was an 11 for me. I got nothing to complain about. The bosses are challenging. Like I said, I beat some without the mimic, without any, um, uh, what's that called? Summons. There we go. I forgot the word. Any summons or anything like that, but I did two different ways. I always change my, my build and stuff like that. But like I said, I feel like people love to complain. 
they'll love this game probably two years from now say how great it was it's all a hate right now it's new people forget about it and move on to the next game complain about that and then just complain 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 complain, complain, complain man that's how it's going but like i said i love this game i love the weapons in here all the builds and stuff like that let me know what you think also in the comments if you're enjoying this one i say it's worth every dollar because we don't see a dlc like this this big we get maybe two three hours out of a dlc but that's it for me guys i really enjoyed this video hope you enjoyed it too and let me know again what you think about the dlc i will catch you in the next one